talking about how play attention can improve executive function and self-regulation. Many of you here today have been to our past webinars, and you know that we have a lot of webinars that talk about organization strategies or time management. We've talked about emotion regulation. So there are a lot of top topics that we cover. We provide you with many tips and strategies that you can use to keep your days running smoothly. However, many of you have requested a webinar just on play attention and how we can help you develop those skills, those core cognitive skills that you need in order to actually implement those tips and strategies much more to much more easily, right? So if you have those foundational skills, then those tips and strategies can oftentimes be much more useful. So today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to talk about play attention and how we can customize a program to help you improve those core cognitive skills that lay the foundation for strong executive function. Now, when we talk about play attention, play attention specializes in one thing. And we have been doing this one thing for over 25 years. We help you reach your goals. You're all here today because you have a specific goal in mind. That's why you're here. So if you would like to share your goal, you can go ahead and type that in the chat box so we can talk about that a little bit further. But perhaps you are a, an adult and you want to develop skills that will help you be more organized or help you be more productive in the workplace. Maybe you're looking to improve some of your relationships or communication skills. Perhaps you're a parent or a grandparent and you want to help your child or your grandchildren develop those skills that they need in order to show what they know. Because many of you may have very bright children and you look at them and wonder why are they struggling in school so much? So perhaps you're looking to help them make that process easier. So that homework that should take 15 minutes takes 15 minutes and not two or three hours. Maybe you want to help your child learn how to follow through with multiple step instructions or improve memory, working memory. Those are some of the areas that we can help improve in order to make school much easier for them. Or perhaps you are a professional and you have clients who are struggling with executive function and you want to help them develop skills. Uh, let's see, I have Ruth here. She says she's a school counselor and a parent of a neurodivergent and I want to help support them better with executive functioning. Great, Ruth. And Diane says, I want to help my daughter who is 10 starting develop executive function skills. I don't feel equipped to help her developing these skills. And, you know, Diane, you bring up a couple of important areas. One is that your daughter is 10 years old and you want to help her start developing these skills. And, you know, we do expect everyone to have strong executive function by the time they reach middle school. Unfortunately, we rarely teach those skills in elementary school. So you are right to think this is a real critical time to start developing those skills. But how do you do it? And play attention will give you a customized approach in order to start developing those skills and teach you how to work with her in order to develop. Now, what we do to help you reach your goals is we customize a neurocognitive training program to develop those core cognitive skills. And we know that we can do this because as, we, as I said earlier, we've been doing this since the 1990s. I personally started using play attention with my students back in 1996. We were the pioneers in neurocognitive training. Our founder and uh, CEO, Peter Freer, actually developed that genre. 
In the 80s, when he was working with students, both children and adults with attention difficulties, he started researching the different attention training techniques that were being used. And he came across the work that Dr. Pope and Dr. Paulson were doing with NASA. And what he found was that they were using feedback-based technology integrated with their simulator training. This means that while they were working in their simulator, they were monitoring the brain states or the attentive state of those pilots and astronauts. So what this meant was that as they were working in their simulator, if they were very attentive, then all of their controls became very easy to use. They were able to do their job basically very easily. But if they started getting stressed or fatigued or distracted, if they weren't as attentive, then immediately all of those controls started getting very sluggish and their job then became much more difficult. So they were receiving real-time feedback while practicing their job skills. And the founder of our company thought that was brilliant. If I can integrate feedback technology and show my students their attentive state while practicing the skills that they need on a day-to-day basis, then I have a comprehensive program. And that is the very foundation of play attention. So what makes us unique and effective is what we teach and how we teach it. Play Attention is the only program available that integrates feedback-based technology with cognitive skill training and behavior shaping to provide you with the most comprehensive approach available. So you see the body wave armband on the screen, but I'm going to show it to you here. This is that body wave armband. And on the back of the armband, there are three sensors. And those sensors monitor brain activity indicative of how attentive you are. And then that information is given over to the computer where you're allowed to control all of the cognitive exercises just with your mind or more specifically with your attention alone. And you receive constant and immediate feedback as to whether or not you truly are focused and paying attention. And that's a really important first step for you or for your clients or for your children. Because right now, if you look at your child or your students and you say, I need you to pay attention, what do they typically say back to you? Go ahead and type in the chat box. What are you hearing? I want to see if you're hearing the same thing I used to hear as a classroom teacher. If you say, I need you to pay attention, what do they typically say back to you? That's right. Deep. D says, I am. Uh, Candace says, I am paying attention. Rebecca, I am. Kelly, Diane, Mark, everyone is saying, I am paying attention. And that's exactly what I used to hear. I am paying attention. And the interesting thing is, they really do think that they're paying attention. The difficulty is they haven't actually developed what it takes for them personally to stay very attentive to low stimuli activity for long periods of time. So what we're doing is we're taking attention, which is very abstract, and we're making it concrete and controllable, where you actually see your attention in real time. You feel what you're doing, and you're allowed to practice very specific cognitive skills. And all of the cognitive exercises that we address are brain enabled, meaning you have to be paying attention no matter what skill you're working on. You have to be able to, you have to be in your peak attentive state. If you're not paying attention, whether you're working on task completion or social skills or auditory processing or working memory, no matter what cognitive skill you're working on within our software, remember it's all brain enabled, meaning we're constantly monitoring your brain activity. So if you're paying attention, the activity will start, the activity will continue. If you're not paying attention, 
then immediately the character will go in the wrong direction or the activity will stop. And then you know right away, you have to control that behavior, control that daydreaming, focus back in, in order to continue. Just as those pilots and astronauts could do their job very easily if they were paying attention and they were receiving that constant and immediate feedback so that they were developing that self-regulation and self-monitoring they needed in order to pay attention and do their job, develop skills. That's what you're doing here. We're giving you real-time feedback while you work on all of the specific skills you need for success. And when we talk about developing these skills, you know that we're talking about actually changing the architecture of your brain. By changing the architecture of your brain, I mean we are developing these new neural pathways that are necessary for strong executive function. But brain change doesn't just occur, right? It doesn't just happen. There are very specific catalysts that are necessary to spark brain change. And we incorporate all of those catalysts within the play attention program. So let's review the different catalysts necessary for brain change. The very first, of course, is what we've been addressing, and that's attention. Since we are always monitoring your attentive state, we make certain that while you're working, you are paying attention. And the reason we do this, the reason we know that attention is the very first catalyst necessary for brain change is that you can have a great teacher, you can have a great counselor, you can have a wonderful life coach, but if you are unable to pay attention to that teacher or that counselor or that coach, it's going to be very difficult for you to process the information and learn to spark that brain change. So that's why we make certain that no matter what skill you're working on or behavior you're working on, you are in your maximum attentive state so that we know you will be able to actually benefit from that training process. Then also cat, uh, challenge. Challenge is another catalyst necessary for brain change, right? Because we know that if you are 100% successful, you're not going to learn anything. So we have very specific ways to present challenge. One is our auto-adjust algorithm. And that means when you put that body wave armband on your arm, we're only looking at your best ability to pay attention. And then the bar is set there. Now, if you're able to reach or exceed that level of attention, then you can activate the activity. You can move the character in the right direction. If you're able to maintain that level of attention for a given number of seconds, then in the background, we raise the bar just a little bit so that you have to be that much more attentive in order to be successful. So you're always challenged. So that means even if you don't have a deficit in these areas, you will be challenged. So if you're sitting here and you're thinking, well, my child could really benefit I don't really have an attention difficulty, but I could use it for peak performance training. You are absolutely right. Individuals who use play attention for peak performance training include NASA, NASCAR, the Women's Olympic uh, bobsled team, even the Nuclear Power Agency up in Toronto uses play attention to develop that level of focus. Now, their employees or their, uh, their athletes don't necessarily have attention problems or deficits, but because of their job or because of their sport, they have to be able to get in that zone. So they use play attention for peak performance. So we're always going to challenge you as an individual. We also know the opposite is not, is all, <laughs> the opposite is true. That uh, because some of you may be sitting here and think, Gosh, but is it going to be too challenging, right? Because my son is already frustrated at school. I don't want this to be frustrating. And we know that. We recognize that if it's too challenging and it's uh, something that he cannot achieve, 
then no learning is taking place either. So the opposite is true. If he needs challenge, we present challenge. But let's say that you're starting to get fatigued and you're not able to reach that same level of attention you were able to reach in the beginning of your session. Then we bring you back down to your last successful level and then gradually build you up. So we're always keeping you at that challenging yet success-based pace. So, so far we've integrated attention, challenge, and finally we incorporate deliberate practice. Deliberate practice means there is specific goal setting. You're not able to just go through the motions. If any of you have looked into deliberate practice, one of the uh, pioneers in that area is Anders Ericsson. So you may want to look up his work. He did a lot of work with athletes. And what we find with athletes is that athletes tend, and this is for many of us, it's true, uh, no matter what we're doing, we tend to practice the things we're good at, right? The things that are easier for us, we practice more often. But what they found is that peak athletes, the gold medalists, those top athletes, they practice what is most difficult. So there's always that challenge and goal setting incorporated. So we have artificial intelligence called sheer genius and sheer genius is going to set goals for you for every single cognitive exercise during every single session. So you always have a small achievable goal that you're working towards. So it may say today you're working on time on task. Yesterday you were 70% attentive. Today, let's try 72%. So there's always that mini goal so to help you strive for higher levels of achievement. So, so far, what we've talked about, what makes Play Attention unique and effective is that we're the only program that integrates feedback technology with cognitive skill training and behavior shaping. Plus, we have all of these different catalysts that are necessary for brain change incorporated into the program. And as I mentioned, we've been doing this for many years, since the early 90s. But Tufts University School of Medicine wanted to know, is that integration that Play Attention does, is it important? Or can we simply give you a series of cognitive exercises or what you hear a lot about as brain games and get the same results? So they went into the Boston Public School District and they had three different groups of students, all identified as ADHD. The first group received play attention. So they had the full integration, the full package. The second group received just cognitive exercises. So brain games on the computer, but no feedback technology and no behavior shaping. And the third was their control. So they received no intervention at all. And at the end of the study, the play attention students were the only students that showed global improvements in all areas, including academic, social, behavioral, and executive function. They were also the only students that if they were on medication, because some of the students were on medication, some of them were not. And if they were on medication and they were in the play attention group, the play attention students had an average decrease in their medication, where the other two groups had an average increase. And that goes back to skill building, right? If we can help you develop the skills that you lack, then there may be less of a necessity to mask those symptoms. So if any of you have not yet reviewed those studies, but you would like those studies, just type in Tufts in the chat box, and I'll make certain that we send you an email with those studies as well. So we've been talking about the feedback. So what I really wanted to do is make certain I showed you at least a clip of what the feedback looks like. So here is one of my students, John, and you'll see that he has that body wave armband on. And remember that armband is monitoring his brain activity that tells us how attentive he is. So in this activity, the goal or the educational correlate is attention stamina. What we're teaching him is how to direct and sustain his attention at will, much like being able to pay attention to the teacher in the classroom 
or the boss in the workplace. So when he starts this activity, he sees the character at the top of the screen. You see that submarine? It actually starts at the top of the screen. But once he's focused and paying attention, he's able to push that character down to the bottom of the ocean just with his attentive state alone. And then he knows that's the state I need to be in when I'm paying attention. So remember when we were talking about how attention is abstract and you can look at your child and say, I need you to pay attention, right? Well, if you've been telling your child for years, you can't pay attention, you never pay attention, I need you to pay attention. Now they actually experience attention. Because if you think about how we learn, go ahead and I have another little pop quiz for you question. So type your response in the chat box. If you think about you or your clients or your child, how do they learn? Are they experiential learners, hands-on, or do they learn best by lecture? So do they learn better through experience or hands-on, or do they learn better through lecture? Go ahead and type in your responses, just so I can take a quick poll on what's best. Okay, I'm just scrolling through and it looks like everyone who has answered has said experiential or hands-on. And that's what we're doing here, right? Because most of our students, most of us in general are experiential learners, right? You give us an experience and we learn from it. Unfortunately, with attention, we try to teach it through lecture. We say, sit still, eyes on me, pay attention. And we expect them to develop that attentive state. So now what we're doing is we're providing you with an experience. You see your attention, you feel what you're doing, and then you're allowed to practice it. Because once my client here, John, has that character at the bottom of the ocean, if he starts fidgeting or if he starts daydreaming or if someone walks into the room and he can't filter filters that noise, immediately that character will start to float up because he's no longer as attentive. And then he has to control that behavior, control that daydreaming, focus back in, in order to push it back down to the bottom of the ocean. So through that immediate feedback, that constant and immediate feedback, you're able to develop that self-regulation and self-monitoring you need in order to do it at will. Because not only will you start to understand and recognize when you're paying attention, but you also know when you're not paying attention. And more importantly, through practice, you know how to correct it on your own. And that is the power of real-time feedback, integrating that feedback with cognitive skills. So that is our very first activity called attention stamina. But if you look on the screen, there are many other cognitive exercises that we address. Because when we talk about ADHD or attention deficit, attention's just the tip of the iceberg, right? There are all of these other uh, foundational skills that we want to improve. So all of these exercises are available to you and you might not necessarily need all of them. Uh, you will be able to customize your plan along with your executive function coach because all of you here, whether you're a home client or a professional client, you will be assigned a personal executive function coach, one of our coaches here on staff to assist you every step of the way. So the first exercise we'll do with you is actually assess your needs and customize each individual's profile. That means we're going to pinpoint uh, each of the different cognitive skills that are most important for your program. So if we look at all of these different exercises and remember, they're all brain enabled. They are all activated with your mind alone. We are going to address attention stamina. 
That is your ability to direct and sustain your attention at will. That's the one I was just explaining to you, just like being able to pay attention to the teacher in the classroom or the boss in the workplace. We also work on visual tracking. That's a great one if the teacher's ever said to you, you know, she does great when I stand right next to her. But as soon as I walk away, she's out the window and out the door. And then she has that diffused attention where she's paying attention to a little bit of everything. So we work on staying very focused and visually tracking that teacher as he or she moves about the room. Task completion. This is a big one for both children and adults. Task completion is the ability to start an assignment right away, keep your attention just on that one assignment until completion, that closed end tasking. So that 15 minutes of homework will take 15 minutes and not two hours. Or if you're an adult and you think, I was busy all day. And then you think, but I finished nothing. So it's that ability to start and complete. So on this activity, since we're working on task completion, it's a bit different than attention stamina that I, I explained earlier, because attention stamina, that one ends in the beginner level after five minutes. But on task completion, since we're teaching you how to complete a task, that one will go on and on and on just like your homework or the laundry goes on and on until you complete it. So in this activity, you're actually powering a little forklift driver. Once you're focused and paying attention, you can drive that forklift driver across the screen, pick up a crate, and then carry it over to a flatbed truck. If you get distracted, then that forklift driver will freeze and you have to focus back in in order to continue. So you are going to recognize very quickly that if you're procrastinating, if you're fidgeting, if you're daydreaming, then this task can take you 12, 14, 15 minutes. But the faster you become at it, the more proficient you become, you're going to consistently complete it in seven minutes or less, really giving you that empowerment, empowering you to show you that you can pay attention from beginning to end and you can complete things in a timely manner. And uh, that is really critical to transfer and generalization so that when you have those tasks in front of you, you will be able to stay on just one task until completion. Short-term memory, that's your ability to remember dates, names, facts, filtering distractions. So, you know, a lot of times, especially when I'm talking to adults, they'll say it's like there are a million different TV sets going on in my head all at the same time. And that's not a lack of attention, right? Attention deficits really a misnomer. There is no one with a complete deficit of attention. Usually it's a diffused attention where you're paying attention, you have great attention. The problem is you're paying attention to absolutely everything around you, right? So you're on sensory overload most of the time. So we need to teach you how to stay focused and filter out all of that unnecessary stimuli. Working memory, of course, this is your mental workspace, being able to take in information, manipulate that information in some way, and then give a response, much like a mathematical word problem. Auditory processing, this is the ability to follow through with multiple step verbal instructions. So if you say, go to your room, put away your sneakers, bring down your jacket, you'll be able to follow through with that uh, without redirecting them or reminding them. Hand-eye coordination is more about small motor control. So it helps with handwriting or keyboarding. Social skills, this can be a difficult area if you have a hard time with peer relationships because you are not paying attention to social cues. So you miss the look, you miss the shake of the head, and you end up responding inappropriately or impulsively. So social skills, we're going to actually teach you how to pay attention to a social cue, process that information, and then respond appropriately. Motor skills, this is a good one. If you have more bumps, bruises, accidents than your peers, it helps with that mind-body coordination. Uh, spatial memory. Spatial memory is the ability to remember where things are located. So if you come in and you throw your car keys up on the counter, and then two hours later you have to leave, you'll remember where you put those car keys. And we also work on mindfulness. Mindfulness is the ability to... Um, stay in the present moment. 
So this is a great activity. It's also called Lotus. And you'll see a Lotus flower in the middle of the screen. Once you have your mind in the present moment, you're able to start opening that petal on the flower. If you start thinking about what's for dinner, when's my next appointment, uh, what time do I have to pick up the kids, that petal is going to start to close because you're no longer in the present moment. And so we hear so much about how mindfulness helps with the symptoms of ADHD. However, you can't just look at someone with ADHD and say, I need you to practice mindfulness now because mindfulness is hard. It's hard for all of us, but especially if you naturally have a scattered mind. So what we're doing is we're making accommodations. We're giving you a visual representation of what it means to be in the present moment. And we also work on impulse control so that you'll be able to stop, think, and then act. And so all of these different cognitive skills we can address within your play attention program. And like I said, we're going to customize the program so that we address the specific skills that are important for you. Now in the core, the first six activities that you see here come standard in the core. So attention, stamina, visual tracking, time on task, short-term memory, discriminatory processing, and the academic bridge. The remaining are options for you that we can pick and choose from at any time and incorporate those into your program. So those are options. And as I mentioned, every single activity has a beginner, intermediate, and advanced skill option. So there are certain benchmarks you have to reach before moving up to intermediate and then to advanced. But our artificial intelligence, sheer genius, will keep track of those benchmarks and graduate you when appropriate. So why do we work on all of these cognitive skills? Well, remember our end goal. Our end goal is to help you develop all of these skills that are required or that lay the foundation for strong executive function. So if you think about the different processes of executive function, there's emotion control, there is the organization, there's mental flexibility, and you don't see any of that in my list. But if you want to teach your child, let's say, how to regulate his emotions, then he has to have the ability to pay attention to the situation, to process the information fully, to control his impulsive nature or response. And all of those skills are what you're working on in every single play attention session. So every time you do a play attention session, you're developing the skills that are required for strong executive function. So you're developing the skills that they need in order to regulate their emotions, in order to be organized, in order to uh, be mentally flexible. That's the goal within play attention. And in, a, in addition to all of the cognitive skills, we also have what's called academic bridge. And as I mentioned, this does come standard in the core. And this is where you can do your real schoolwork or your office work while connected to the body wave system. So you see this student here has the body wave armband on and she's writing. And as long as she's paying attention to her writing, she hears from the computer, good, great. If she starts to drift, she hears focus. Because remember, we're not monitoring how, where her eyes are. We're monitoring how attentive she is. So as long as she is paying attention to her work, she receives that real-time feedback. So this is where we're asking you to take all of the skills you've learned within Play Attention and apply them to your real work, transfer and generalization. So it's no longer mom and dad standing over them saying, get back on track, get back on track. We are guiding them through that process. Now, if you listen to all of those uh, different cognitive areas and you saw the list, some of you were probably thinking to yourself, check, 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 and you know exactly what you want to address within your program. If you have a question, then you may want to consider doing uh, one, one or two of our assessments. We have two different assessments available. One is called FOCUS, which is a norm reference test of attentional control. 
It's computer based. It takes 20 minutes. And at the end of the 20 minutes, you receive a full report that tells us how you compared to the performance of your peers. We also have the brief available, which is a behavior rating of executive function. So that's an online survey that you will fill out. And if you are an adult, of course, you can do a self-assessment. If you have a child under the age of 13, you can do a parent or, um, or teachers. If they are 13 or older, they can do a self-assessment as well. So the assessments really help us. When you do the assessments, we then need about a 30 to 40 minute block of time to review the results and talk about customizing your plan. So those are an addition. Each assessment is $50. Uh, but with this webinar special, you will receive your assessments and follow up for half price. So if you're interested in hearing more or actually doing the focus assessment or brief assessment, just type in assessment in the chat box and we'll follow up with you to help you with that process. Now, some of you say, you know, gosh, we just did a three hour neuropsych evaluation and I don't need anything else. We have a 20 page report. So if you have assessments you want to share with us or you just have enough knowledge about yourself or your child or your clients, uh, we can help you customize a plan that way. But if you would like a concrete assessment, uh, just type in assessments and we'll follow up with you um, to get the, that information from you. Now your play attention program, we've talked about everything that's incorporated as far as the feedback technology, the cognitive training software and the behavior shaping and all of the catalysts necessary for brain change. But your program itself will include everything you need to run a successful program. So you'll have your body wave armband. Uh, that's that armband that monitors your brain activity. You'll have your customized neurocognitive training plan. So that's the software. Now, I did notice as I was uh, talking that someone mentioned it sounds like gaming. And one thing I want to point out is that all screen time is not created equal. This is very educationally based. And if you looked at our activities, you'll notice when you saw the screen I shared with you of attention stamina and you saw that my client was looking at the screen and he had to push that character down to the bottom of the ocean. Did you notice anything about that screen, about the graphics? That's about as exciting as they get. Very, very simple, very low stimuli. And we do this because we know that if you give your child an off-the-shelf video game, if you give your child Minecraft, he or she can hyper-focus in those situations, right? How many of you, you can raise your hand or type in yes, you have a child with a severe attention difficulty, but you give him a video game or her a video game or they're watching a YouTube video and they can hyper-focus in those situations where it's hard to draw them away from it, right? Many of you are saying yes, absolutely. And that's because they're wired to pay attention to high stimuli, right? They can pay attention if it's high stimuli or high, high, uh, high interest, Mark says, children and myself. And it's really common, Mark, for both children and adults, right? And uh, so we know we don't need to teach you how to pay attention to entertainment or high interest. What we need to teach is what's more difficult, and that's how to pay attention to low stimuli much like the classroom teacher or the workplace where everything's much lower stimuli. So that's why our graphics are very simple. They're engaging, but they're very simple so that you can learn how to pay attention to that low stimuli at will. We also have a great behavior shaping program and this you will utilize if you have an individual who has a lot of self-distracting behaviors. Um, so how many of you here, you can raise your hand or type in yes, if you want to help an individual work on self-distracting behaviors. And by that, I mean nail biting, skin picking, chewing on their shirts, uh, calling out. Okay, Diane says yes. A lot of you are saying yes, Sarah. Okay, then we would turn this component on because it's so powerful when you can show them how certain behaviors affect their attention. 
Because if you think about my first client that I showed you, and he has that character at the bottom of the ocean, if he starts picking his skin or biting his nails immediately, that character is going to start to float up because he's no longer as attentive. And then he gets this one-to-one -one correlation on how that behavior affects his attention. And then we can use that information to help him start to control those behaviors, not conducive to good attention. Really powerful, really important part of the program. But if you don't have those behaviors, we can turn that component off for your profile. As I mentioned earlier, um, we also work on, a, we provide you with a personal executive function coach. That's one of our coaches here on staff to assist you every step of the way. And that support is free and unlimited as long as you're using Play Attention. That person will also take you through a live tutorial where we take you through a practice session to make sure you're real comfortable with everything before starting to work on your sessions officially and you have a lifetime membership with us. Uh, Jen says this could be anxiety. It could be anxiety, right? And, you know, Jen, what you'll notice is that, and this is why we're doing this webinar next week that I mentioned earlier on ADHD and anxiety, anxiety in the brain, right? Because it is very common for the two to coexist, right? That comorbidity of anxiety and ADHD. And so, what we can help you do is help learn, again, not only how to self-regulate and self-monitor that attention, but also anxiety. Because as soon as you start getting anxious during your session, anxiety is not conducive to good attention. So you get that immediate feedback that you have to control that anxiety in order to continue. So really good point, Jen. Yes. So Jen, that would be um, very, uh, very what should I say, very effective for your son in that situation. And if you want to chat about that a little bit after, I'd be happy to talk to you about that as well. So your training schedule is really important. We do recommend that you work at least an hour per week. And that hour can be broken up. So you could do, let's say, two 30-minute sessions, or you could do four 15-minute sessions whatever's most uh, effective for you personally. Typically, after about six months, six months, six, uh, six weeks of consistent training, you'll start seeing small steps of improvement. So you may notice that you are more engaged, that your child isn't spending all night on homework, that you are able to remember uh, things easier. So you're going to start seeing these small steps of improvement after about six weeks of training. And remember, that's an hour per week. Now, what you're not seeing is what's actually occurring in the brain. And that's that you're causing these new neural pathways to become formed. Remember, we talked about how we're wanting to spark brain change. So you're causing those new neural pathways to become formed. But in the beginning, those networks are weak. So that means one day it'll look like they're doing beautifully. And then the next day it'll look like they've never heard the word attention before, right? It's learning, it's a process. So there's up and down, but through the practice and repetition, the goal, the end goal is to make these skills permanent because we want to know that not only will you have these skills now, but you'll have them 20 years from now. And that usually takes about 40 hours on the software itself. So if you're working that hour per week, I would plan on about 10 months of consistent training and around everyone learns differently. So around that 40 hour mark, you and your executive function coach will review all of the information, uh, make certain you're at all the advanced skill options. If everything looks good, maybe we'll do another focus or brief assessment to make certain everything's transferred and generalized. If everything looks good, we can start graduating you from the program. If it looks like there's more work to be done, we simply customize the plan and we keep going. The important for, thing for you to remember is that you have that lifetime membership. So even if you graduate the program, but you want to continue using it for peak performance training, you can do that. There's never a time you have to stop using Play Attention. You have a lifetime membership and you have unlimited support, but there is a point where it becomes permanent. 
So there is Sheer Genius, and I just wanted to run through all the things that Sheer Genius does for you, because once we get you set up, we set up your profile, then we bring you through that tutorial, then we can actually work on your sessions. And Sheer Genius is going to do a lot for you. So when you log in, let's say Jen logs into her session, Sheer Genius is going to say, okay, Jen, today you're going to work on attention stamina, visual tracking, and task completion, time on task. And then that mini goal, remember the deliberate goal setting that we talked about. So your goal today is to complete attention stamina with 75% attention. And if you do that, you earn a point and the point goes into your reward system. So there's a whole reward system built within play attention to help with the motivation, to help you uh, reach towards higher levels of achievement and reward those achievements. And Sheer Genius will manage that reward system for you. Also, Sheer Genius will monitor progress. So at any time, you can go into your dashboard and you can see progress in all areas. So you can track different data points. You can look at attention, duration, uh, distractions, impulse control. You can do correlation data. You can look at behaviors. But if at any point you want more information than just graphs and raw data, reach out to your executive function coach and they'll do a whole data analysis with you. And as we're going through the program, although you're going to start seeing those steps of improvement after about six weeks and we're working towards that lifelong permanency, you're going to increase attention, you're going to see improved behaviors, your ability to complete tasks is going to be much better, you're going to be much more productive, your memory is going to be better. You're going to notice less impulsivity. You're more organized. You'll have re improved relationships because you're able to control your impulsiveness. You're able to communicate better. You have less anxiety, improved productivity, like we mentioned, better work performance, success at school, and overall improved executive function and self-regulation. You know, we have many uh, success stories on our website. So if you haven't visited our website to look at some of those successes, you may want to do that. A variety of individuals from, you know, five years old. I think the oldest on there is in his 80s. Um, so there are a lot of testimonials, but I particularly uh, like to share this one in white on my screen where it says play attention has given me the confidence that I need to live productively and not only survive, but to thrive in a challenging work environment. And that's one of our clients who is 26. And uh, he, when he started using play attention with us, he was struggling at work. He had dropped out of university. And now he's not only doing well at work, but he's also enrolled in university again, something he thought he would never be able to do. And it was just simply the skills were always there, right? He was very intelligent. The skill was there. We just had to help him develop those cognitive areas that he needed in order to apply those skills, apply that intelligence and be successful. So there are two different programs available, the home system and the professional system. The home system comes with a user license for two people. That means at any one time, you can enroll two family members into the program. Now you can always upgrade that user license because I know some of you here have mentioned that you have three or four children and yourself. And I think that's a great way. You know, we don't know what causes an attention difficulty, but it does seem to run in many families. So if you are planning to go through the program with your children, that shared experience is a great way to do it. But if you want to upgrade your user license, you can. Each additional user license is just $50 or those uh, user licenses are reusable. So once one person graduates the program, you can simply delete that file and enroll a third or a fourth family member at no additional cost. The professional system has an unlimited user license. So if you're here today and you're thinking, I have 25 clients I could enroll tomorrow, then you can enroll all 25 of those clients. And there's no relicensing fee each year. So the professional version and the home system. 
And again, this is everything you'll receive, your body wave technology, your customized neurocognitive training plan. I just saw someone ask a really important uh, question and it goes along with the neurocognitive training plan. Um, let me see who asked that. Uh, Jen, so you said, does it improve slow processing? And that's a really important point because in all of the intermediate and advanced skill options, we address task switching, impulse control, distractions, and processing speed, because most of our clients do have difficulty with attention and processing speed. So absolutely, every single activity addresses processing speed. Very good question. The behavior shaping module, a personal executive function coach, your 90 minute or 60 to 90 minute phone tutorial or Zoom conference tutorial, and your lifetime membership. Music